to Lame Creation's second video, Log Analysis Made It Easy, uh, second video for Event Gen. We, in the previous video, we showed how to ingest a very simple sample log. Now the problem is we need to get rid of these TS times of zero and things like that. And now we're going to show you how to do that with pretty simple method. Um, I'm going to go to my little text editor here. I've pasted the code. Basically what we need to do, this is the stuff we're going to be looking at. Maybe I can uh, highlight this correctly. To we're going to use token dot. And this is basically a numerical thing. If you're going to, I'm going to replace the timestamp, but in my little sample file, I made a timestamp, a source IP, and a destination IP. So that would be three variables that I'm going to be changing. So the first one would be token zero. If I was going to replace the source IP, then I would do token one. And if I was going to replace the next one, it would be token two. And I just keep adding to it. And I'd be writing basically these three lines, and I'd just be changing this one here and then whatever I'm replacing. For the for this video, we are just going to replace the timestamp. So we're going to have this token dot zero, and we're not going to make any changes to it. The token we're looking for is the very first thing it's going to look for is give me a little regex statement. And so let's go look at my log. Not you. You need to go away. All right. If I go and look, the logs are held in the sample directory and so there it is and if I go cat my log dot sample I see that I have a ts colon zero and this is what it's talking about the source IP and the destination IP I want to look for just this little piece and so all I do is I say hey there it is and then I use a colon and there's the colon and then it says look for the digit slash d plus until the digit ends uh, and so that's your regex there and so it's basically saying hey look look for the name ts grab the digit and that's the piece we're going to replace is that little digit that's why i wanted to put everything zeros it's basically going to say find that zero and you're going to replace it and what are we going to replace it with a timestamp a timestamp here says we're going to replace it with a strip time. We could replace it with IP addresses, files, uh, numbers, sequential files, random stuff generated. We're not going to do. We just want the timestamp, and then we're going to replace it in seconds. Uh, Splunk uses epoch time, which is the number of seconds uh, that have occurred since uh, I think 1970. Uh, and so we want to put it in percent s is the, the sign for strip time for seconds and so it's going to just basically make a timestamp of seconds there for us and so it's going to replace this zero with a timestamp in seconds and it's basically going to look at the time what's the time right now all right that's what i'm going to generate and basically uh, yeah and that's that's really all it's going to take so if we come in here and we go back to our default we're going to go to our event gen I'm going to insert, and I'm just going to paste this in there. Copy, paste, and now I write, and then we're just going to restart Splunk. And if we do that, we should get rid of these timestamps of zero here. And replace them with current seconds. All right, we're in, and if everything worked right, run this command. I might want to give it a little bit of time to make sure everything's caught up and running. Event gen is not the very first thing that starts on Splunk, so patience is your friend. If it takes lots of minutes afterwards, it may you probably have a problem, but don't be completely shocked if your logs don't come in the minute Splunk is available. Having more than 30 logs is a good sign, and there's a timestamp. And if I go to an epoch generator, this should epoch time conversion. I paste that in. It should match. I should get a Sunday, June 11th, 11, 12 p.m. or 5, 12, depending upon. So we're probably going to see a 5, 12 on my system. 
There it is, 512.51, time matches. And so it has used this epoch time, and that is matching up with the time that it's been generating. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. That's how we can take the sample time and use it when we're creating an event gen. Uh, next video will replace these destination and source IPs. Anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful and helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And I hope you keep coming back for more videos in this section about event gen and you check out my other videos. Hope to, uh, hope to see, I hope that you'll be watching more of my videos. Take care.